go. Hello, Nettians. My name is Josh Gale Twitter, and I am your coach of the New York Metagross, welcoming you to IBL season number five, week number five. We are here going against uh, the beautiful, amazing Chriselle Key, who made my beautiful, amazing rebranded logo that you've been staring at for the past five weeks. Uh, Chris Elke and her New York self, he goes our challenges for week number five. And we are here, ready to go. And I'm super, super excited. Of course, go sh be sh of course, be sure to go check her out in the description below. If I can learn how to English, then we will be doing a lot better now. Uh, I think the music is a bit loud. Let me... Let me turn that down a bit. Wait. Let me turn it down to about there. There we go. Let me try that. Let's see how well that works. So... We're going against Chris Elke, and she has a scary, scary team, as you can see on your screen. She has a team of Zerora, uh, Mimikyu, Yon Mega, Rhydon, the Hoopa Unbound, and the Mega Sceptile. She has five more mods, of course, if I can pull up my notes faster, uh, that she can bring. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? There we go. Uh, the five mods she did not bring, I believe, include the Token Tomorrow. Yes, the Token Tomorrow, a Salazzle, a Mean Shell, a Type Null, and a Lapras. So the only Z-Mon that she could potentially brought was her Yon Mega. So that's very, very nice uh, to know that the only Z-Mon we have to worry about is Yon Mega. The other ones aren't Z-Mons. The other mods that could be Z-Mons are Token Tomorrow, Salazzle, and the... What was it? Oh, the Lapras. So... Uh, but we are bringing a team that I built uh, with my front office. Very, very happy to them. Uh, very, very grateful to them for their continued support and helping me. So our team, as you can see, the six mods we're excited to bring on our squad. Uh, we're going to start off with a Robombi. Robombi's going to be rocking out with Clover Dance, Bug Buzz, Moon Buzz, and Hidden Power Ground. That's going to be our win con for this game. Uh, so it has Jardy Berry, allowing me to take a rock move and help set up better... So that I can, you know, sweep his entire team, or sweep her entire team, take her down. Hidden Power Ground is there, of course, for the Toka Tomorrow and the Zero, I guess. Not really, because the Moon Blast is more. It also hits, uh, that's it. <laughs> it's mainly for Toka Tomorrow, because that could have been a stock to it. Um, I have a little bit of spit up just so I can set up easier against stuff like the Mega Sceptile and the Young Mega, etc. But this is mainly my Wing Con, kind of what we built around, because Rabombi just absolutely destroyed her. Uh, the other mod that we decided to bring, so the next mod I wanted to bring was, um, I wanted something that can check the biggest, one of the biggest threats to my team. Of course, she has multiple biggest threats to my team, but the one that I thought was going to be the biggest trouble for me was going to be the Mimikyu. So I wanted to check for that. So I have a Scarf Cure in Black. Scarf Cure in Black with Terrible is going to be able to ignore Disguise. And with the attack investment I have, is going to be able to Oko the Mimikyu with Iron Head. So I've, I'm a mixed Cure in Block. I have enough speed for base 80, so it's going to be the Cure, uh, the Hoop Unbound, which also lets me outspeed the Mega Sceptile at plus one, which is very nice. But I have uh, some special attack, I have um, some attack, and I have Earth Power, Iron Head, Ice Beam, Dragon Claw. Just moves that will help me hit everything. I believe I hit everything super effectively on our team. I believe, except for the Lapras. And the Mian Chao. And it's like, no. Wow. So 8 out of eight of 11, I hit super effectively. And I just hit them all generally pretty hard. Um, next one we're bringing is Rhyperior. Rhyperior is there for rocks. Rocks are really, really nice against her team, chipping down the on Mega because that's a huge threat. Getting 50% off on that, just chipping, the rest, chipping at the rest of the team. It's also going to help me with something like the Thalazzle, which could have been a big threat. I have Rindo Berry, so I can take a Giga Drain from the Yon Mega, knock it out with Rock Blast. I can take a, uh, any attack from the Sceptile and um, weaken it with the Rock Blast. I have Swords Dance there, just as the last move. I didn't really need anything else, although Ice Punch could have been uh, it kind of helpful for the septile. I generally thought I was going to be okay versus the septile with the last three months. But it's mainly there for rocks. Smack Spideff. It's mainly there for rocks. Stopping on Mega for sweeping me and also the last one. Um, so we have Skarmory, Whirlwind, Roost, Braidbird, and Defog. Mixed defensive uh, Skarmory here. Mainly here because I don't want to lose to the septile. It helps me a little bit with the Cure and Black, it helps me with Mimikyu, it helps me with the Mega to an extent, the Ride On, all basically everything that you can see on the screen outside of the Zerora. Um, I really wanted to go Shed Shell home, because I'm pretty sure Toko Tomorrow gets Magnapool. No, it doesn't. Does it? It doesn't. Never mind. Why am I thinking that? Who knows? Uh, it also helps me with the Type Null, because I think they're setting up. It's going to be really, really annoying. And yeah, it's very nice here just to keep stuff from sweeping me. 
default, of course, there to deal with the Paddlers because I don't want to my my two biggest threats to my three biggest threats to a team to you know take 25% of the rock every time they come in. Next one we have is uh, Salt Vest, Mirage Mortar, Flamethrower, Focus Blast, Flame Charge, and Earthquake. I have a lot of speed. To have speed, the Hoop Unbound, I have some HP, and then I have Special Attack. Uh, Flame Charge is just there as a nice last move, generally to boost my speed and be a threat to faster mons, such as the um, such as the why did it hold on, let me try a different remix. It seems like the music just like went away. Oh, a new music streaming service. Congratulations, you guys get an ad. I'm sorry. Uh, loop. Let's try that out. And, okay. Seems like the music's better now. So, uh, this is mainly here again for Mega Sceptile, stuff like Yonmega. It's just a general nice bulky mon. Can also handle the Hoopa if she decides to bring like a spec variant. I also don't get oak code by Hoopa, which is very nice. It's a HEB investment, therefore. And Earthquake just lets me hit generally like her entire team. Mainly Salazzle. Um, but it's there for Salazzle, Togutamaru, Zerora, etc. Um, Focus Blast is there for the uh, Rhydon. So last but not least, I have my Mega Venusaur knockoff Synthesis Sludge Bomb and Giga Drain. Helps me with Zerora mainly because Zerora is a huge threat to the team as is. Um, helps me mimic you a little bit. That's generally it. Can be like a nice, even though it's uninvested in special attack, can still be a nice offensive threat to your team. And yeah, that's what we're bringing. So uh, looking at lead matchup, let's talk about lead matchup for a second. Uh, looking at our team, I believe I think Skarmory is my best lead possible, just because Skarmory has amazing matchup potential versus her entire team. And whew. The only thing that really scares me out is the Zorora, which I can uh, kind of check with one of my, uh, with a multitude of my Pokemon. Mainly the Venusaur comes to mind, mainly the Rhyperior also comes to mind, so that's very nice. Now then, we're going to go ahead and get in there. I'm going to leave with my Skarmory. Uh, there will be a couple weird plays. I'm not going to lie to you, there are going to be a couple weird plays, but that is because we had to recreate this battle because we had to disconnect. However, I was, uh, I was well prepared. I was well prepared, so... We're going to get into this. I believe I need to rocket this thing forward because Joseph is amazing and gives me time to talk about the team and everything. Uh, it gives people time to talk about the team and everything. Shout out to Joseph Gaines, by the way. I gave him a huge shout out last time. Go shout out. Shout out to Joseph Gaines. Go check out Joseph Gaines in the description below. Joseph Gaines has recorded every game for me so far and he's going to keep recording games for me because he's just a nice person. Well, I'm not saying he has to. But, like, he probably will just because of the person he is. He's an amazing person, so go check him out. He's awesome. So she decides to leave with his Aurora, which is absolutely horrible for me. And I had to get him out of there immediately. It really sucks that I was not able to just, like, have the lead matchup because I always suck at lead matchup. But I'm going to go to my Venusaur. She's going to go for Grass Knot, which is a very good play because I almost take the right period to get at my rocks. But I didn't want to risk the Grass Knot yet. And so I'm going to beg her both. Let me keep, make something clear. I clicked Knock Off. I clicked knock off to get rid of an item in case she decided to switch out because Fudge Mom was a huge her and she can't touch me. I clicked knock off. I almost shit myself. I see acrobatics come off, I clicked knock off, and I basically just gave her, uh, like, hey, here, Oko and my Mega Venusaur. So I get the hell out of there. I know she's gonna click acrobatics again because Mega Venusaur is a huge threat to her, and if she gets rid of it, she's in a really good position. So I'm gonna go to my rep here. I do have, again, the Rindo Berry so that. Grass not will not kill me, and I have to get rid of this. This is now a huge threat to my team. This is probably the biggest threat to my team at this point, and I have to get rid of it. So I'm gonna click Earthquake. I don't care if she goes out to the Omega because I have again the Rindo Berry. I will be able to take a Giga Drain, and I will be able to whew, knock that out with the Rock Blast. If um, the fact that it's still running around, even though I'm just letting my Rock Carrier get Giga Drain, it's okay. If I get my Mega Venusaur back to full, it will be okay, and the fact that she is revealed to be a, what it looks like to be a mixed variant, oh god, I just knocked something over. The fact that she's a mixed variant means she can't be um, max attack or max special attack, so some of my moms will be able to help check her a little bit better. She's going to go to the Mega Sceptile, though, I'm getting the hell out of there, and I'm going directly out to my Meg Mortar, which is one of my designated checks for this thing, and she's going to reveal that she is uh, ready for my Meg Mortar. Uh, and, uh, this is a, this is a big yikes. This is, this is a yikes here. As she's gonna go for the Swords Dance. 
So immediately I'm like, oh great, so she has Sword Stance, she has Dragon Claw, she has Leaf Blade, and she has Rock Slide, which is gonna suck. I have to attack this thing. I very much have to attack this thing. I don't see any other reason why I shouldn't. The fact that she, you can see she's switching out, the fact that she's scared of them scarves is really nice, or that I'm a berry is very good. I'm gonna click Flame Charge, because on the off chance that she doesn't kill me, or the off chance that she shoots us out, it gives me the best momentum possible. If she stays in and she doesn't kill me, I get the Flame Charge chip, and then I get to get another hit off on her. So that's why I went for Flame Charge over something like Flamethrower. And if she goes into Zerora, I am now faster than that if it's not running max speed Jolly. Or she's just like speed creeping something, I'll be faster than that. And I can hit that with an Earthquake. However, I'm also going to be faster than Choice Scarf Hoopa, which is really nice, as I'm going to go for Earthquake on the Zerora, and she switches into her Hoopa. So this is mainly the only play that really becomes weird, is these set of circumstances. So in the original game, uh, she clicked Zen Headbutt and got Flame Body Burned uh, and revealed to be Choice Banded. And I clicked Flamethrower and got some chip damage off on her. The next turn, she clicks Zen Headbutt again. And, um... I can't remember how the original game went. No, she didn't... Oh, yeah, she clicked Zen Headbutt again, but I uh, I went first. So I clicked Flamethrower again. And I got more chip off on her, and Zen Headbutt killed me. And I went into Rhyperior, clicked Rocks, because it would, uh, Hooper was going to die to the burn the next turn. So in this recreation, this was, I swear to you, this was the first recreation... To the first recreation, I clicked Flamethrower, and I burned. Because <laughs> I said that I was okay with not burning, like I would just roll with it, but that's very nice um, for us. So unfortunately she gets burned and she doesn't get, um, she only gets this Zen headbutt off. Uh, and the next Flamethrower would kill her. However, because of course we're trying to recreate as best as possible, this is why I clicked Flame Charge here instead of Flamethrower, and knocking her out. Um, so I click Flame Charge, and I do um, enough to where two burns will kill her. Again, very, very lucky that that worked out like that. And she's going to be able to click Zen Headbutt, and she's going to be able to kill me. So, my main mortar dog goes down there, but because, once again, she's in range of burn, I get to go to my Rhyperior, and I get to put my rocks, and just allow this thing to die to the burn the next turn. So that's very, very nice for me. Rocks are going to be very nice for chipping down the rest of her team for a potential Rabombi or Kieran Black sweep. At this point, it looks like that my Kieran Black may be able to sweep, depending on um, uh, if I get uh, if I get Rocks up. So now that I got Rocks up, I can probably sweep her team with Iron Head if I can um, weaken something like the Mega Sceptile. If not, I might be able to sweep with Ice Beam if I weaken the Mimic U, etc. He go, uh, she goes out into the, Licar uh, the Licario, though the Zerbora. And I'm going to sacrifice my Rhyperior here to the Grass Knot, which is um, good for her. Uh, she gets a kill off my Rhyperior, and now if she has Volt Switch, she gets to freely click it, which is not good for me. But I'm going to go to my Kieran Black. Uh, she is not in range of two Iron Heads, I don't believe. I need one more round of Rocks. And I'm not. I'm never going to die to a close combat from a uh, non-life or boosted Zerora. So the fact that she switches out here is great, because after that next Rock Switch in, she's going to be in range of two Iron Heads. I click Iron, uh, Ice Beam, because, again... I want to kill that thing, and anything will basically die. Rhydon will die, Mega Sceptile will die, Mimikyu will die in two, and maybe we'll get Shadow Sneak off, but Ice Beam was my best play there. So, she's going to go to the Peekaboo, knowing that she can live an Ice Beam and knock me out with the player off. I'm not going to allow that to happen, and I'm going to get out of there. Save my Terror Volt, uh, Cure and Black for later in the game, and I'm going to go out to my Mega Venusaur, and either sack it off um, to what's going to be a never-ending nightmare on the next turn, or um, click Sludge Bomb to break the disguise for my Rabombi, or um, kill whatever comes in, because both mods that could come in on this would die. So she's gonna stack off her Mega Sceptile. I guess I think she forgot the Terror Volt goes through disguise. Otherwise, she could have clicked Never Ending Nightmare, or not Never Ending Nightmare, because she's not a Z-Mon. Uh, she could click Shadow Claw in there, potentially to a Coden. But uh, Mega Sceptile's gonna die, and she's gonna go through Lucario. Oh, I know I'm in range of Acrobatics. I'm gonna stack off my Cure and Block, because now that. That rock switching has happened. I can finish off this game with the Iron Head. I actually think she is in range of one Iron Head. I think that's how it ended up working. Because I was trying to get in range of one Iron Head instead too. And I think Close Combat still does not not knock me out. But I'm going to go back to my Kieran Block anyway. I can't go to my Rabombi because Acrobatics will knock me out. So I go to my Kieran Block. Terror Volt happens. And I'm going to click the Iron Head. And I'm going to knock out this Zerora. That's right. So it wasn't range of two. It was trying to get in range of one. Uh, and the reason I click Iron Head instead of Ice Beam is because I believe that Mimikyu would still live Ice Beam after two Rock Switchings. So I clicked Iron Head, knock out the Zorora, and Mimikyu's going to come out. Mimikyu's disguise is not going to matter due to my Terror Volt, and I'm going to click Iron Head, and Kiram Brack is going to pick up three kills in this game and 
we are going to win 3-0 versus Selkie and her New York and stuff because very good game to her, of course. Shout out to her um, for being really cool with the recreation and everything. I think it was my side, actually. that ended up disconnecting because my, uh, my computer is being an asshole. Or, or not my computer, but my internet is being an asshole. But I hope you guys enjoyed. That's going to be week five. And we are now moved to three and two. We have now pulled ahead. In our differential, we're actually looking uh, towards our player spot now. But next week, we are going to be getting uh, a battle versus the one and only JB Westside and his Colorado Blue Swans. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this match. I hope you guys will enjoy next week, and I'll see you guys then. Peace.